Taylor from the Finnish folk duo Vilda. Vilda combines yoik singing, an ancient tradition of the indigenous Sami people, and accordion. How are you two getting on? Hello. <laughs> It's well. I, I should just admit and say that we've done this interview twice now because <laughs> I accidentally deleted the recording. So um, this is our, our second take of this um, and I'm incredibly embarrassed that my file management on my computer is not very good. However, I have gotten to know the girls a little bit better and I'm kind of delighted to still be talking to you. Thank you so much for being so understanding. So you're both um, extremely established musicians in your own right and both of you have toured extensively internationally, you've had you know, awards, um, you've done your thing, you're involved in several different projects but together you met while studying global music um, and it was quite a quick and natural process of you coming together, is that right? Exactly. Yeah, it, it just uh, was during the first weeks we started the studies and we heard each other in the, in the school, different kind of, um, yeah, uh, when we were like learning to know from the classmates. And uh, it was uh, Vivi who uh, like suggested that we could meet after school and uh, talk about this uh, possibility of working together. And uh, it went very smoothly in a way that just after a few weeks after that discussion we got our first geek together and yeah maybe six months after that we had like a real concert and Wilda was founded and Vivi you grew up um playing accordion of course and you said that you've kind of straddled a few different genres. You've studied classical, but you always kind of learned some folk tunes growing up and you were informed by folk dance as well. Hilda, your mother is a musician and you learned a lot of songs, presumably from your mother. So this duo is quite an interesting um, form, is quite an interesting uh, and unique and innovative sound that you create. Um, what kind of how do you pick the repertoire that you decide to record and perform? I guess we are composing quite a lot together. So one of us is bringing an initiative, like first idea, a seed of idea. It might be a yoke melody or it might be a melody or composition that I've done. And then whoever brings it, gives it to the other person. And then the other person is adding her touch in it so then I think that's m how most of our songs are done it's it's a collaborative work of yeah. both of us giving an artistic and creative input input into into the songs and that's how we then polish them to sound like Wilda in the end. And these yoik melodies um, some are traditional but the ones that you perform are yoik melodies that you've um, composed yourself um, Hilda, would you like to uh, just define for the viewers what a yoik melody is? Uh, the yoik is a vocal tradition of Sami people and we Sami people are living in the, the most northern parts of Sweden, Norway, Finland and uh, Russia. And uh, the yoik has many kind of like meanings and it has we have like different kind of yoik styles in different areas and dialects and in our area we call yoik lehti in south they call it Volje, and here in finnish side uh, they call it uh, leut and liute and um, and a person can yoik um like a uh, person can yoik like the other person, yoiks of the other people or uh, nature or uh, a village, reindeer or, <laughs> or other animals and things like that. And uh, with the person yoiks is kind of a way of uh, being part of the family and the area and uh, 
and it's kind of a part of your identity through when you're having the yoik it's kind of your another name and and uh, other people might know it and yoik it yoik your own yoik to you only maybe for 10 seconds or something like that or and then you can also teach for people your own yoik but you only yoik it when people ask uh, you to teach it otherwise it will be pragging to yoik it. I think that's magical listening to how you're describing these these yoiks and I think that your music is mesmerizing the, the voice and the accordion, the marriage of that is, is really interesting. It is steeped in tradition, but it really sounds quite innovative. Um, and I think that that's quite special, moving our tradition forward, being part of a carrying stream, a continuum, because if you don't innovate, then a lot of these uh, songs and traditions will be lost and they'll be stuck in time. And I think that you guys do that really well, whilst maintaining something that it sounds traditional and it's written with a traditional style, but it's all your own music. And I think that's, that's really cool. Um, you were saying that a lot of this is maybe informed by tradition, but you really put your own spin on it. Um, I guess in your other projects, you might use things like folk song collections or recordings or archive recordings, or you maybe pick up your songs or tunes from generation to generation. But I guess studying together, is a huge source of inspiration. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we have had some kind of assignments and uh, things to compose uh, for uh, for the orchestra or ensembles in the school. And once we had one assignment to compose a little, little melody of a theme of home or being out of home and I I composed uh, this yoik melody for this uh, hill that is kind of right there and that's a place where we have our reindeer roundups reindeer gathering every year and the next gathering is going to be in two weeks actually. Wow that's that's quite exciting so of course this is week six of Global Music Match and it's your focus week and the project has been going on for six weeks so far and we've had everyone else but this is your week and I think it's I think it's really cool uh, the project's been brilliant in the fact that you know it's introduced us all to different traditions cultures and music of people from all over the world and um, I've been really excited to, to talk to you guys and you've already mentioned this but cultural identity and home um, that really is important to musicians and as musicians I think we're really inspired and influenced by our surroundings and our identity um, and Helda you of course are indigenous and you're from the, the Sápmi region um, and of course Vivi you're, you're Finnish so your, your music really does represent a marriage of these traditions of cultures and makes your act really unique but you both have had experience of performing in, in different kind of genres and different projects too. What's that been like? Well, I would say it's always everything that I, I do or we do, it's somehow bringing some um, new things also to, to, for example, Wilda. I mean, it's, it's so great to get inspirations from like playing with musicians from totally other cultures and different musical styles and sometimes something that is like not my my own project but somebody else is getting to join into something like that that's always something really enriching and then I find myself using stuff that I've learned somewhere else also when composing music for for Wilda and so it's definitely something that it's only bringing new, new things and new colors into, into something I do. I think it's never taking away at least anything. <laughs> Always a positive thing to discover different things. What about you, Hilda? Um, what was the question again? <laughs> you know what, I don't know what the question was. But, um, I'll go on to this. You guys are incredibly innovative and you do it in a very sympathetic way. 
um, sympathetic to tradition, but also making it cool and new and accessible. Um, it, has there ever been a challenge of getting a healthy balance of representing and maintaining your distinct traditions, but also making your music accessible to more people? How do you teeter that balance? How, how do you deal with it? Uh, from my part, I feel very safe and uh, good, like trying out different kind of things and fusion the tradition with other kind of music styles and ways. Uh, yeah, um, but of course, like some core ideas and things are sometimes very present and sometimes not. And and uh, of course, there are some people, uh, probably in er every every <laughs> society, who view things that it's very good to think keep the tradition very pure and like in very old kind of traditional way but then in a way when i view the tradition i i see it in a way that it can be kind of renewed through the way you see the world and you yeah uh, like how how it works for you and and yeah <laughs> Fifi, I would... you um you really think that the tradition is truly in safe hands and that there are plenty of people representing this tradition and you feel like you perhaps are, are innovating and you're not worried at all and that's really really great to hear what what, what do you think yeah i i definitely think what you just said that we are enough here i mean in the world to present music in our own ways and i totally agree with hilda that it's important to 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 value the tradition and tr try to save that old traditions that are existing there because those are the roots of of many other things but at the same time in order to have a living tradition i think it's important that it's it's evolving and it's changing with the time because that's natural happening we are people people grow up and that's what happens with mm -hmm. with arts and music as well and tradition and and I think there is room definitely for all ways of doing and presenting that tradition. So there is room for a really traditional representations as well as modern ones. And exactly like Hilda said, seeing the world through your own eyes, like what else can you do? So, yeah. so it's definitely both are needed and there's room for both. And that's why I don't feel personally any pressure about about how should I present something, because I think this is what I can do. <laughs> I can only present it this way yeah. as I'm doing, and yeah. and yes, this this is fine. <laughs> I think that's really really incredible, and I think I wish five years ago I felt more like that because I worried so much about upsetting tradition bearers and upsetting the elders that maybe passed on the songs. And I never wanted to you know, upset anyone. I just wanted to make music which resonates with, with me and also resonates with, with some people. And I think that having a balance of maintaining tradition and innovating is, is the key to securing the future of all of our folk traditions. And I think it's wonderful that some artists are, are so comfortable in knowing what they want to do. Um, so yeah. We yeah. Can... And there you can see the living tradition, like, yeah through the way that it can be uh, made in a way of the how the person who is uh, uh, performing or doing uh, uh, living the tradition that it's doing it in her or his own way and that has been very nice also like not only music but also like in the tradition of our clothing and the handicraft that you can really make it look like you and our traditional wear is like made for ourselves to be worn and then it might be have have this uh, very individual touch on it and i think that's also in the music what is very beautiful and that's how the traditions keep being and, alive and strong and i think also as long as we are taking time to study things and to know and recognize where 
where these traditions and where the roots are, where things are coming and how, for example, songs, if there is something that is really specific to certain cultural like elements, if there's something more than just a music, if it's if it belongs to a ritual or something, it's you have to acknowledge these things. And then with that now knowledge that you have, then it's easier to also start moving it forward and make it look like your thing. So uh, of course it's a balance of, of things. You cannot just grab stuff from here and there and do whatever without knowing what you're doing. I think, yeah, that's I something to take into con consideration also, but, yeah. Yeah, I think anyone that listens to your music and certainly your album and watches, you know, videos that's out there of you guys performing will really appreciate the fact that you both are incredibly informed about your distinct cultures and traditions that you represent. And I think with integrity um, comes comes the respect that you garner as musicians. I think that that's really special about Vilda. Um, we kind of touched on, on the Yoik tradition and how you're writing from tradition to make your own very original music. But um, Hilda, I guess you, you speak um, a Sami language and there's more than 10, but only nine exist nowadays. Um, you mentioned the four countries that, of the Satmi region. Um, and I think it's really interesting, but also sad to hear that Norway is the only country in which it's recognised as a legal and lawful, lawful, sorry, I just said lawful in Scots, lawful um, language. And I think it's very similar to the Scots language, in fact, that in Scotland we have three national languages, English, Gaelic and Scots. However, Scots is not recognised as a legal language at all, even though 1.5 million people speak it. potters and Scots it's a huge huge thing however you can do a degree in Scots but it's not a real language so we're fighting for our Scots Language Act and I'm just wondering although you can access governmental services in Finland in Sami languages and there are you know places in Norway that well Norway and parts of Finland that do recognize it as a minority language are there anything any movements any campaigns that are taking the language forward and asking for it to be legally, legally recognised. What's going on? Is there broadcast in it? What, what's happening? I think people have been like very much working on the like the um, children's daycares, like uh, making these uh, daycares for the min minority Sami language groups as well. And uh, then it has been very nice during these these past years that people have been um, working on uh, children's TV programs of making these dubbings in in Sami language and now also they just made one dubbing for the Anaras Gjella the Inari Sami language which which only has something like I don't know 500 people speaking it so I think that's very very important and that I think that's very good way of uh, like uh, giving uh, life to the language through the the youth and our future. That is really really important and the more that young people can switch on the tv and the radio and identify with speakers and broadcasters who are speaking in their language the more that they can have comfort in their own cultural identity and feel good about themselves and I guess as musicians who work within you know the Sami language or sing songs of that tradition I think you must be really passionate about having your own language recognized and I think that hopefully it, it will be recognized in all the regions that it's spoken. I guess it must be difficult because there's so many um, parts of the Sami languages, there's so many different types and are they, can you, are they very similar? Are they very different? Are they mutually intelligible? Can you, can you understand what another Sami language is, is the same? Is it the same? Is it different? I think they, 
um, I think what's exactly like important through the, making like radio programs or TV and like doing all the dubbing and things in different Sam languages is that the uh, people from speaking like other Sami languages could like uh, more easily get used to hearing the other Sami languages and then through that the communication would be a lot easier and yeah it's sometimes uh, for me for example a bit challenge and sometimes having this concert in Sami Sami and meeting people in Sami festivals and you really want to communicate in your native language but then it's kind of sometimes a bit difficult so people switch to to English or Swedish or Norwegian and yeah. That's wonderful so Vilda your al your latest album is brilliant and you have been on the road together for quite some time over 200 days away last year. That's a huge touring schedule for both of you to undertake. And I think that lockdown has been quite good for both of you. So what, what have you been up to during lockdown? What about you, Vivi? Well, uh, I migrated myself to the eastern side of Finland and on the islands at Lake Saima. My family has a boat there and I spent most of my summer on the boat, I had my accordion with me, of course, but most of the time went to foraging and picking mushrooms, berries, fishing, just being outdoors, being with the family, having sauna <laughs> and taking care of myself and really embracing this amazing chance of having such a long holiday, basically. And I had some, some gigs coming in the summertime, some solo things. Uh, also some wheel gigs, we've had a little, little things here and there, which been great to also hit the stage every now and then to keep some professional activities also going on. But it's really been a great, great moment for taking some time to rest. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and have right new you, you have a new music video coming out, you've been recording, yeah. you won an award for one of your music videos over lockdown. You guys have been incredibly active and I think that's wonderful. But Hilda, you're saying that you've you've enjoyed this time to focus on yourself. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I was of course working also with the music and we also made this right when we got the corona lockdown going on here in Finland. Uh, we made one uh, song during that time and we filmed it as well. So we had this kind of uh, uh, long distance uh, song made together and video. And uh, yeah, I think I had the most beautiful time ever in my life uh, during this spring. And since I got to take time for myself and come back to North to my home, and I spent the whole spring working with the reindeer husbandry and I was um, herding the reindeer there at the fell side and also I was uh, taking part to the reindeer spring migration in the Norwegian side of Sami area, seeing that uh, old way and traditional way of working with the reindeer and that was very very beautiful experience for me to experience and I think that will somehow affect to the music and um, and also bring something new for my uh, especially for the Yoiting kind of expression um, and spending time in the Norwegian side of Sami area and hearing a little bit more of that Yoik tradition as well and I think that will uh, bring up some spices as well. It sounds like you've really immersed yourself back, in, back at home, back in your culture and yeah I think that probably will manifest in the next uh, melodies you write or the next you know record that you maybe record or the next songs. I think that's really really special that you've had some time at home in your region because I think when you move away from where you were brought up or where your family is you don't realise just how special and important your identity is until you're away from home and you realise what you're missing or who you're missing or you're missing the land and the people. And I think it's really, really special that both of you have 
been able to slow down because you've had a quite a mental touring period. So your album was released this year? Was it just this year or was it last year? Year before, yeah. 2019. 2019. So um, your plans for the future, I presume that 2020's gigs will be rescheduled to next year. Will it be quite busy, I presume? Well, I guess it will gradually get busy. I mean, there was a lot of touring and concerts getting cancelled and postponed, but I think it's, we can only guess how the world is gonna go these days and when are we actually hitting the road again and in what extent will that happen? But I guess we have quite a good momentum um, on getting back to do some shows and concerts and well we've had some in Finland now during the corona period as well so I guess we're looking forward for getting back on stage at some point yeah I'm running out of battery <laughs> I need to really well, get I'm going to absolutely kind of round up by asking you a question that I guess I've asked some of the, our other teammates um, in team five of Global Music Match. And I guess I'll ask you this, Hilda, first. Um, if you had advice for a young traditional musician or singer or folk musician or singer who are starting out, what would be your advice for them? Um... When it's about your tradition, of course, and it's, uh, and especially when it's some kind of uh, like a special and a little bit more rare tradition, possibly, uh, it's kind of it's a, it's the own you have the own process of finding your own voice, and it's never like like um, taken granted or like. Uh, uh, so it, you have to, of course, work a lot uh, on that. And uh, what I think is beautiful that people can um, do is uh, when you are working and uh, touring and you get to meet all the people and, and you get to present yourself and your tradition, you can learn from the other traditions as well and uh, get other kind of perspectives perspectives and ways of uh, like viewing your own tradition and getting more more kind of a spice to that oh that is really really sweet and some great advice there Vivi what would you what advice would you give a young kind of folk trad musician starting out I agree a lot what Hilda said I would just say that be open-minded keep your eyes open uh study other traditions and then study your own and you'll be able to compare you'll be able to meld these things together if you wish and you'll through learning your own tradition and learning other traditions you exactly as Hilda said you're gonna get some perspective on seeing where you come from and how you feel about that and it's an amazing feeling when you can share something of your own to other people and yeah you're but gonna have great experiences with that then and no stress if you don't feel that you are the perfect one of uh, upholding your tradition but it's like it's a long process of finding your own voice and yeah that is really yeah. good that's a great great point to make that I think a lot of us feel like we're carrying the tradition on our shoulders but really we can all share it, the the weight of it and we can do our own things I think that's really important um, especially with your oral tradition and I guess with tunes as well but I think sometimes as singers we get we get chastised a little bit more if we do something out of the box I don't know why but um, it's been so, so lovely to talk to you and I think that this actual interview has um, been much more concise. So thank you so much to Vilda for chatting to me. Their music is on all of the major online distributors um, and you can get them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and they are brilliant. They are our last um, week, week six of Global Music Match. Thank you so much guys! <laughs>
Thank you. That was great. <laughs>